So this week, I'm gonna teach you one of the strongest card tricks that I've ever taught on this channel. It is devastating. The good news is that like all the tricks on this channel, it's completely self-working. You don't need any skill to be able to do this. So even if you're a complete beginner, you're gonna be able to do one of the strongest, most devastating card tricks ever created. If you could only do one trick, this is the one, seriously. And if you're a professional, guys, you need to be doing this trick. It gets amazing reactions and the secret is so clever. I guarantee you'll fool yourself the first time you go through it with the cards in hand, it's so cool. I'll even show you how to use this trick to get tons of followers on Instagram every time you do it. So grab a deck of cards, let's get into it. All right guys, so let's get into the trick. So you're gonna take about half the cards divide them in half and you give the spectator the choice of either pile. So say they choose this pile, they're going to mix these cards. Meanwhile, while they're mixing those cards, you mix these cards. And then in the end you swap. Okay, so you get to swap, they mix them, and you mix these. Now if you've got more than one person, you can hand these out and have multiple people shuffle these cards. It's absolutely fine. So then you say, okay, let's take it a step further. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to make two little flowers like this. Okay, make two little flowers of the deck. And then you can cut any number of cards from here, flip them face up, and just mash them into these face down cards like so. So they mix these now, they push them all together and mix them up so that now they've created this absolute mess of face up and face down cards. And you get them to do this a couple of times. They can take any number of cards here, flip them over and mash them into this half over here. And you basically have, have them keep doing this until they're happy, right? And they can keep doing this mashing the cards face up and face down and creating an absolute mess, having as much fun as they can, like so. And eventually you just get these mashed in with everything. So if we just push all of this together, there's genuinely no control here. So they end up with this complete mess of cards, like so. And they've done everything. You say to them, look, you know, you could have cut any number of cards and mashed them in and I've literally not touched the cards. You've created this absolute mess now, right? The crazy thing is, is that I had a little feeling about what might happen. And a couple of days ago, I put a post on my Instagram. For the first time, we're gonna take a look. So, we bring over my phone now, this is my Instagram. I'm gonna go into this post over here, and you will see it says, this will blow your mind, All right? This will blow your mind, check this out. So, there will be exactly 23 cards face up. So we'll check it out. Look, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, exactly 23 cards face up. How crazy is that? But there's more to this prediction, check this out. So it says, there will be exactly 14 black cards. So we'll count the cards, we'll count the black cards. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 11, 12, 13, exactly 14 black cards. How crazy is that? But we'll go a stage further, right? Because there's more, it says, all of the red cards will be even. So check this out. We spread these out now so you can see every single card. You can see every single one of these is even. Every, oh wait. Uh, there is an odd card, the three of diamonds. If someone will point that out, they'll go, wait, wait, there's an odd card, the three of diamonds. But there's more to the prediction because the last scroll says, with the exception of the three of diamonds and you have predicted an outcome that nobody could have predicted this is crazy okay the effect that you just saw which is called shuffleboard was created by simon aronson and it is a great example of how a very simple mathematical idea can be used to create mind-blowing card magic. So what we're going to do here is we're going to empirically kind of verify what's going on 
so that you understand, oh, I can see why it works. And this will enable you to not only use the principle more confidently, because you'll know what to expect, but it will also give you ideas for how to use it in different situations, and perhaps how to even branch off from this core idea and come up with your own principles that could be used in mathematical card magic. Now, one of the challenges in clearing away the complexity of what went on in that presentation is we need to not become overwhelmed with the color of the faces of the cards. Some are red, some are black. Some of these were in the spectator's pile at the beginning, others in the performer's pile, and then we're flipping things over, face up, face down, moving from one pile to another. It's really easy to just find complexity of all of that mind-boggling, which adds to the surprise at the end that anyone could possibly predict the ending organization of the packet. So to help us reduce the complexity of the presentation you just saw, what I've done here is I've chosen red back cards to have red faces as well. So if you see this card face down, you'll know automatically that the face of the card is also red. I've done the same thing with the blue back deck. So if you want to think of this as black, I guess, or B for black, um, the face of these cards will be black. Okay, so if you see a blue back card facing down, you know that its face is black. Okay, so that will help quite a bit and improve our chances of not becoming overwhelmed with the visual complexity of red face and black face cards being flipped and transferred and then flipped again and then transferred yet again and so forth. Okay, so that's why I'm going to use cards from two different decks to help us. Okay, so the principle at the heart of this effect, I call it the FOAT, F-O-A-T principle, or the F-O-A-T procedure, okay? And that stands for flip over any number of cards and transfer them. Now, many procedures, like this one, have something called a mathematical invariant. So this is simply some kind of characteristic or property regarding the packets that's unchanged despite the number of times a certain procedure is performed. So here is the property that doesn't change regarding these two piles. So given any two piles of down-facing cards, call one pile the spectator's pile and the other pile the performer's pile, any number of applications of the FOAT procedure will preserve the following property, okay? So this is what we're going to kind of explore and informally verify together here. The spectator's original cards will always face the opposite way to the performer's original cards within each of the two changing piles. So the thing to do is Think of the performer's pile as consisting of just red cards, which is what I'm doing here. And think of the spectator's pile as consisting of just black cards. Now, in the actual presentation, that's not true. We have red and blacks mixed in, which is just muddying the waters quite a bit. And that's why people can't see through the chaos of the whole thing, okay? But this will enable us to clearly see Okay, what really is going on here? Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is if I take, so just think red cards are the performer's original cards, regardless of what pile they get moved to, and the blue back cards are the spectator's cards, regardless of which pile they end up in or get moved to. Okay, so for example, if I want to move just the one card here, to the spectator's pile, the way that it's done within this routine is you flip it first and then you kind of mix it in. So we'll just put it up there for now. So whether it's mixed in or not, the important thing is look at the state of the cards. Is it true that the spectator's original cards, which are these blue backed ones here, do they face the opposite way to the performer's cards within that pile? Well, they do because the spectator's cards are face down, the blue ones, and the performer's card, which is a red face card, is face up, 
Okay, so that indeed is the case. Okay, now as you might imagine, if we move a card from the spectator's pile, remember when we move cards, we have to flip them first. Okay, that's really what the procedure was. Um, this new pile will also satisfy that. Is it true that the spectator's original card or cards, well, this is the only card the spectator originally had, and it's sitting right there. Is it true that it faces the opposite way to the performer's original cards that are in that pile? Well, yes, for the same reason. The performer's cards are facing down and the spectator's card is facing up. Okay, so what we'll find is it doesn't matter how many cards are transferred and you can do this many, many, many times back and forth. This property here will hold. Okay, so that's why it's called a mathematical invariant. This will always be true given this procedure of flipping over any number of cards and then transferring them to the other pile. So for example, if we now take two from the performer's pile, flip them over, and then set them on top of the spectator's pile, it is still the case that the spectator's cards, namely the blue ones, are facing the opposite way to the performer's cards, okay? Now it gets a bit more interesting now if we go back and maybe we'll grab one of the spectator's cards, all of these, and then flip those, which is what's required, right, to move them, okay? Is this property still the case? Well, it is. The spectator's original cards, which is just this one here, this black one, it faces the opposite way to the performer's original cards, okay? And if we were to move another one of these over, we flip it and then set it down, that will still be the case. Spectator's two cards here face the opposite way to the performers. Now, if we take all of these here and flip them <laughs> and set them down, is it still true that the spectator's original cards, which are just the blue back cards, are they facing the opposite way to the performer's original cards? They are indeed. So it doesn't matter how many times you go back and forth as long as you're, you're flipping them before you set them down on the other pile, this will always happen. It will always be the case that if there are spectator and performer cards within a given pile, they will face the opposite way to each other. Technically, it doesn't matter which pile you flip at the very end. You're going to finish with a packet that satisfies this, namely the performer's original cards will be facing the opposite way to the spectator's original cards, okay? And so the only thing the performer needs to watch for for this final step is they need to know which cards they want facing up and which cards they want facing down. So if they want the cards from their original pile as the performer, to be face down, then this is what they would want right here. If they're wanting the spectator's original cards to be facing down, then we should have flipped the bottom pile on top of the top one, and we would have arrived there. In fact, we would just arrive here. <laughs> you just flip them, right? Okay, um, and then the rest of it, it comes down to the construction. So the performer set up uh, one of the piles, let's say his pile, in a special way so that like 14 of the cards were black and a certain number of them were red and even valued except for one, which was a three of diamonds and so forth. So you construct a pile that has the characteristics that you want. And those are the very cards at the end that agree with the written prediction. And then the other cards don't even really matter, the other pile because in the end, they're going to be face down, no one cares about them, and these, let's say, will be face up, okay? So that really is the secret to it. There's this underlying mathematical invariant that guarantees that this bottom statement will always be true at any stage in this procedure or process. And then the final step is, you flip either the top or bottom pile so that the cards that you want face up are face up. I hope that's helpful for some people to really see what's going on. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.